I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. Every Life day is with the same. God is it's so the good. Grave, and I'm thankful for living. We're so thankful, thankful that you're here with us and joining us on the show, Life yeah. with Gwen and Joe. Keep shining my light, living my life. Every day is the same. We see God in grave, everything. I'm thankful for living. Together, we'd like to help you fall more in love with God. We're going to see all of our experiences, all the things that we do, and places we go, and people we hang with, and it is going to be something that helps us all focus more on God. In the meantime, we're going to fall in love more with God, and our lives are going to be blessed. You're a thriver, in dark seasons, a survivor. So come join us on this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. We're here at the back of Ash Farm, our home. There's some acres set aside for orchard. Got peaches and apples and pears and that type of thing. And then, of course, the grapes. Look at this basket of incredible, beautiful grapes. They're so incredibly tasty. They're fresh, they're, they're natural and they grow here on the property. They're ripe right now and we're, we're out here picking them and it's an amazing thing and it leads us right into the story that we're gonna talk about. And it does help to understand some of Christ's teachings where he was so, he was always using parables, always using imagery and the imagery of grapes in the vine is very profound as found in John chapter 15. So uh, let's go there first. And John chapter 15. Yeah. And these are Jesus' words, right? Right. And, and the, the, the wine thing for me, before I read it, is very symbolic. I mean, Jesus at the Last Supper said, I shall not drink from the fruit of the vine yeah. again until I drink it with you. Right. So, and of course, um, when you take communion, you know, the, the, the wine represents uh, Jesus' blood, right? Right. All coming from the Passover meal, wine was super symbolic and something that was on the menu. The one menu asked for us to, to partake in, wine was a big part of it. So. Right. So it's amazing to watch the, the, the grapes grow here on the property. So these are Jesus' words. It's John 15. Uh, the heading is the vine and the branches. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Unbelievable. I love this. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So Jesus is asking us to bear much fruit, the fruits of the Spirit, we know, love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, all, all the fruits that are God's personality. But there's only one way to get, to get that, and that's, that's to remain, remain in the vine. I mean, these are connected to a vine. I just pulled it off. And so what would happen is this whole thing would wither and then it would turn, you know, very brittle and be good for nothing but the fire. All of the grapes that fell to the ground are going to die. The branch that doesn't remain in the major vines are going to They die. wither. They, they wither. wither. But what, is it, what do you think it means to remain in, I think, in Christ? I, I think God wants us to keep Him in our minds and in our hearts on a daily basis and not just on a daily basis you know you, um, we're supposed to pray and think about God all day long and everything's spiritual so we can incorporate God into most of the things that we deal with during the day and pray about it and attribute all the goodness to God I look up into the sky and I see these incredible trees and we're hearing the birds and and the crickets and we've got 
all kinds of animals running around on the property and I see God in all those things and I know from where they come and from where they're going and so remaining in God to me is just is just seeing all that incredible glory out there um, and attributing it to the Lord. So minute by minute, literally all of us, I know what happens, you get into work, you get into the day, you get into your activities, you're, you're working with your children, you're, you know, you've got taxes to pay and bills to pay and you've got, um, you know, just the house is to clean, maintenance, you may have all kinds of things that could distract you, but to remain in this, this being of self-denial and patience, waiting on the Lord, not being aggressive or greedy or want, wanton and, and lustful, but remaining in Christ, which was a spirit of self-denial. Remain in self-denial. Remain in surrender. Remain in looking to God. Remain in, and so those things could be pop-ups on your phone. They could be whatever until you're in the groove of it. But literally, how easy is it to just pull pull out and and not not be in that mindset? How easy is it in the world to to get a call and you're with a bunch of people that are not remaining in Christ and you're off doing your own thing? And I don't know what the antonym is of you know, not remaining. You, you, you kind of said what I was thinking. Remaining, w one thing that can pull you away for sure is, is hanging out with the wrong people. Mm. If you go out there and you're, and you're hanging out with people that, that, that don't have any God in their life, they're godless beings, uh, unfortunately, it might not be the best crowd to hang out with because you know it's always nice to hang out with people who have likeness in mind and spirit and in heart and if you're with other people who like to pray and who who give out your full attribution to God it's it's easier to stay like that um, like you and me yeah we hang out and we pray and we pray and uh, we want to be around people that you feel comfortable with to pray right and we remain we remain on a daily basis in the word and um, so paying attention to who you hang out with is a, a big part of it I think oh yeah oh yeah it is I said that's a big part, your mindset, setting your mind so that you're, you're so ready to deny yourself food. You're so ready in the evenings to be still. We're, we're in such a world that says maybe give God, you know, when you wake up all the way to 5 o'clock and then at 5 o'clock you don't have to remain anymore. Reward yourself, reward yourself because so you're either you're remaining and then you're rewarding and what Jesus is saying is remain remain from 8 to 5 but remain from 5 o'clock in the evening till the time you go to bed remain in me I, you know I help people a lot with the evening hours and I keep telling them go to bed earlier you know just one hour earlier just one hour earlier if it's it's really knocking you off you know get in there get some scriptures going or some WD TV or whatever. Get get these scriptures and these words about self denial and and turning to God and focusing on God. Get all of that into your mind because where your mind goes is going to be where your heart. It'll steer. It'll steer your heart. And one of the other things that you you always said and and I, I, this this has helped me is you fall in love with what you focus on. And if you're focusing on those things, it's in your heart, and it's it makes it that much easier to just kind of um, make that a, a, a daily routine, daily ritual to uh, remain in the Word, remain in the Spirit, keep praying about things, and um, so you've helped me with that a lot. Oh man, well you've helped me with so much. Okay, so all right, well so too much of this, even though this stuff's awesome, right? God made this to cheer the hearts of men. Too much of it will get you out of remaining because the next thing you know, you're saying things and I don't know what, it, like you, the, Joe's words are like too much of it is a window into the soul and sometimes you say stuff that you regret, things that you shouldn't have said. <laughs> it makes you, I, 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 I somehow reduces your, um, I don't know, social 
uh, things that would be a check, all of a sudden it's like okay to say. And some people get angry, some people just get too crazy, and so it's always good to just make sure you sip it, make sure you, you know, don't plan on drinking a lot, plan on getting a set amount, and then, you know, I take little bitty sips a lot of times, like this. I try to take really small sips so that I don't don't go too far, and, um, but That's anyway. a very good Chardonnay. Ooh, this very is good. good Chardonnay. Yeah. And, and that's from, and that's from the vine. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. God wants our hearts cheered, uh, and he wants us to relax. It's a vasodilator. It really does lower your blood pressure. I've noticed that the French, they always have a glass of wine, and uh, they, they have a long life. They're not overweight. So it's all in moderation. And doesn't it help with digestion a little bit? I it mean, it does. It helps with digestion. So when you have a meal, a little bit of wine behind it helps you digest your food. That's and right. So it's beautiful. So it's all to bear much fruit. And um, another thing we enjoy is good cheeses with wine. We love a little bit of that. It's always delicious, and we're thankful to God because He makes all of it. He is a good God. It's good to remain in Him. Because the, the, that he says at the end, what you read here earlier is that you will bear much fruit. Yes, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. To be God's disciple. Amazing. I want to be shown to be God's disciple and not a disciple of Satan, not a disciple of the world. I don't want to look like the world. I want to look like a child of God. I want to behave like a child of God. The only way to do it is to remain in the vine. And I don't want to be a, a dead branch. I don't want to be a dead, you know, twice dead, where you're, you know, you're, you've unplugged from God. So plug in to God. Plug in to that connection, that connection. The history of the one true God is all about that connection to God, being in the vine, remaining in the vine. It's one thing to connect. It's another thing to remain. And so don't be sad about you're not giving up anything you're not giving up a life you're gaining the spirit of god which comes in and gives you a better personality in every way ah just to have more patience ah just to have more joy ah to be more kind and giving and generous and loving and long suffering all of it that's all fun. Now you, now you, you just said the history of the one true god and i just want to let everyone know out there that that is the title of a book that Gwen wrote called The History of the One True God. And it's an amazing book that has changed a lot of people's lives. And I would recommend it to anyone who wants to read an amazing book. She's an amazing author. It's one of many books that she's written. Thank you, God. But The History of the One True God is a fantastic book. Yeah. And I would encourage anybody who, 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 who has any interest in stuff like that and who, who wants to read about the Lord to to read that book, The History of the One True God. So, well, I am thankful for you. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to be with you guys this week. Thank you for joining us. We love you guys. This is so much fun. And we just want to do a shout out around the world, all of you, all around the world that are watching. And, uh, you know, so just let's, what we want you to know, we're always praying for you. And we're very, very thankful and grateful. And we feel really honored that you would tune in and and uh, share share this time with us. So I guess we're gonna close for now. Close for now, just reminding everybody, remain in the vine. Remain in the vine. Eat some more grapes, okay? And we're gonna have, and we're gonna remain in the vine right here. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Noah. darling. I love you, darling. <laughs> I love you. Cheers, everyone. See you next week. Love y'all. His spirit taking over Haters say, give me reasons You're a thriver In dark seasons, a survivor Autumn how the leaves are dry Brother, how do you fight? I'll keep shining my light Shining my light Every day is the same Heading straight for the grave And I'm thankful for living Thankful for living Thankful for living, yeah Keep shining my light Living my life, every day is the same Heading straight for the grave And I'm thankful for living Thankful for living Thankful for living, yeah Until close sky